give you a bit of an overview about what we plan for Simplex. So, uh, you've already heard it's a three-way cooperation between HITS, KIT, and Heidelberg University. Uh, we're going to cooperate on multi-scale simulation and machine learning for studying molecules and molecular materials. Initially, it's a three-year project. It actually started in October last year, and we've been busy sort of getting it off the ground. Uh, but obviously, to have an in-person meeting, we've had to wait until springtime, and so the weather has really um, just cooperated today. Um, of course, the, um, the project, as you've heard, is enabled by the Klaus Chira Foundation uh, with their generous uh, funding, and it's also supported financially also by the three institutions. You might ask, where does this name come from? Uh, it originated from a sort of brainstorming session we had when planning the, pro the uh, cooperation. You've heard about Simplex and the concept of the triangle and the three institutions. Um, sim represents simulation, AI, artificial intelligence, and the X can represent exchange uh, between simulation and AI, or molecules, biomolecules, and molecular materials, or of course between the methods and the applications, and probably in many other ways that we'll discover during the project. Of course, Simplex has been sort of planned in the context, so it's obviously a, a, a regional initiative, but it complements various activities of the three institutions, as you've already heard. Um, here I've just put up a couple of examples. So Heidelberg, for example, has a flagship program in engineering molecular systems where we hope some of the methodology that gets developed in Simplex may be of application. KIT has, for example, one uh, graduate training uh, group in scale bridging in computational nanoscience and the scale bridging, the multi-scale um, work will be very important in Simplex. And at HITS, um, we have a scheme called HITS Lab for interdisciplinary projects. Uh, one of these is on emulators. Falke Greta participates from the molecular science side, um, but also, for example, Fritz Rupke in astrophysics. And so we also think that the methodologies we work on here in Simplex will be relevant outside the, the molecular domain. Um, also, we want to... Uh, um, complement and synergize with other activities going on uh, in, the, uh, in the area. So um, there's ELIS is an initiative more in the um, AI and data science direction. There's uh, HITS for Health is a Helmholtz uh, graduate school um, data science for health. And recently the AI health innovation cluster has been set up as a collaboration between Heidelberg and Mannheim. Um, and as uh, Simplex evolves, um, we will build international connections, um, for example, possibly with CCAM, which is a European organization for activities in computational chemistry. They organize workshops and training courses. And MOL SSI is um, a center in the United States focused on the development of software for molecular simulation. So the core of Simplex is the research, and in this uh, three-year phase, we will have eight interdisciplinary interinstitutional projects co-supervised by eight principal investigators. So you can see on this, uh, I think I'll resort to this, we we'll have a ring of projects here. We see, you can see the links between the different um, principal investigators, and the principal investigators cover uh, three different domains. So we have um, Andreas Droif, Markus Elsner, and Anja Grinova as experts in quantum chemistry and ab initio simulations of molecular systems and materials. Then Frauke Greta and myself on atomistic simulation and multi-scale modeling of biosystems. And then on the machine learning side, uh, Pascal Friedrich, uh, Ulrich Kircher, and Fred Hambrecht. And the picture below was taken at our very first meeting in October, um, where you can see uh, six of the, um, the leaders of the projects. 
So why do we have Simplex now? Um, I mean, I'm sure you're all aware of the artificial intelligence revolution, its effect on science, and there's a lot of hype at the moment, and you know there have been past periods with lots of hype about the abilities of AI. But it seems this time probably AI is really here to stay. Um, there's really a really big difference in terms of the amount of data that is available and that can be processed, and differences in terms of the hardware, and differences in terms of the algorithms and the software. And these are really, uh, it's a huge difference compared to, let's say, the previous waves. And one way to exemplify this is um, with respect to AlphaFold2 that probably you've all heard about um, for protein structure prediction. Um, so this was news not only in the uh, scientific journals like Nature, but also in the general press. Um, and basically, AlphaFold2 has been developed by DeepMind, uh, uses um, a very clever collection of deep, mind, deep learning tricks together with a good knowledge of the biological problem and the physics of the problem to predict from an amino acid sequence uh, the three-dimensional structure of a protein. So as you can see here, this was really a huge advance compared to other techniques that had been evaluated over the years. It doesn't completely solve the 3D structure prediction problem, but it really makes a huge contribution to, to advancing this problem. Um, but you know, what, if, if this is so good, what, what can we do now in simplex? We know also that similar approaches can be applied in other uh, domains. Um, but I think one can appreciate that there's still a lot to do if one just thinks about this problem of proteins. And, okay, I work on proteins, so I'm going to talk about them now. Um, but if you have the structure, it's very important for understanding what this protein does, but the structure alone does not tell you. And so this is where the simulation can come in. The simulations, we can look at how these structures change their shape, the dynamics, and also how reactions take place. And so what we want to do in Simplex is put together knowledge about simulations and AI, and in particular, to deal with the problems presented by biomolecules and materials of multiple scales, both spatially and temporally. I'm just going to illustrate this by uh, coronavirus, because all of you are probably fed up with seeing pictures like the one I've just put up now of the virus with its spike proteins on it. There's some structure. But if we really want to understand how the virus is transmitted or infecting and how we can tackle it, we need more than just the structure. We have simulated the motion of this uh, spike protein and uh, in fact looked at how this long molecule here, which is heparin, might have antiviral activity. If you look at these two structures, this is an inactive form on the left and an active form with a so-called open arrangement, this lid that sticks up on the right. So in order for this protein and the virus to attach to the human cell, it has to undergo a conformational change. Now, in these simulations that we did on supercomputers, we couldn't sample that. But Lillian Chong and her colleagues in the United States uh, did do that. You can see this um, cyan part is this opening up of this part of the spike. And in order to, to study that, they had to run uh, simulations on huge, big supercomputers. But they also had to use some clever tricks that were basically um, using um, machine learning approaches to guide the classical molecular dynamics simulations in order to be able to, um, to explore this particular feature, the opening of the uh, spike so that it became activated. So this is one way that you can use the machine learning approaches together with simulations to basically guide the simulation space that you're going to explore. Um, of course, we have the challenge of big systems, and um, I've shown you just in the last slide just a part of this whole uh, virus. Very recently, uh, Romy Amaro and her colleagues in, in San Diego have simulated this aerosolized 
uh, cor coronavirus particle. So you can see the coronavirus in the middle and it's surrounded by some salty solution uh, with mucins and other bits and pieces, proteins and so on in it. And this is a system of over a billion atoms which they simulated by treating each of those atoms as spheres that move around by solving Newton's equations of motion on the biggest supercomputer they could find in the United States. Um, but they couldn't do this again without using AI. So obviously these simulations produce masses of data and you've got to somehow make sense of it. So they used AI tools to try to process their data. So this is a very important application of the AI. Um, they also used the AI, as described before, to guide the simulations. And then they also used it to deal with this multi-scale problem. So it turns out that you can see here there's some labeled ions here. These ions are actually very important in determining the motions of, of the, the proteins in this system. And in order to capture that properly, you need to think about atoms not just as hard spheres, but go down to the level of thinking about electrons, the quantum mechanical level. So what they did was, um, from quantum mechanical calculations, use um, some machine learning to derive uh, models that they could use in their classical simulations to account uh, for these effects. So this is, uh, this is an example here of using the machine learning to bridge between scales. So I think uh, this is just simply to illustrate um, some of the challenges we can face uh, in uh, Simplex. Simplex itself, of course, will concentrate on machine learning and multi-scale modeling. And uh, an application that many of the projects will deal with is how do specific transfer processes, such as the transfer of electrons or protons or excitons, occur within complex materials or complex um, biomolecules. And we also want to address the question of how we can we use our knowledge to design molecules with new specific properties using uh, scalable and interpretable machine learning models. So I'm not going to talk in detail about the projects in Simplex because you're going to hear about that at future meetings. But I just will give one example of how we hope that we can pool our expertise in the, um, in, within the cooperation. Um, so here you can see a slide illustrating three of the projects in Simplex that are aimed at machine learning to accelerate material simulations. Uh, the one here on the left is really dealing with the machine learning aspects. How can you describe molecules in such a way that you can do deep learning um, with, uh, on, on these molecules? And this uh, sort of basic machine learning uh, methodology will be used in the second project, uh, which will explore excited states of uh, molecules and transitions of molecules. And the aim will be here to generate so-called potential energy surfaces uh, with the aid of the machine learning methods. And then these sort of models that come out of uh, such uh, studies can be used um, in simulations of big biomolecules, such as collagen that you can see here, um, but at the same time dive into the details of reactions like hydrogen transfer, um, as you can see depicted here. And so the idea here is to put our expertise together to deal with the challenges of the multiple scales, both in time and space, that biomolecules and materials present to us. Okay, apart from the research activities, um, Simplex will also organize other activities like um, meetings, seminars, colloquia. We've already had our first a hit simplex colloquium with an external speaker. Um, we plan to do workshops and training, and you can already find quite a bit of information on our website. Looking ahead, we hope that um, this cooperation will go beyond the initial three years, possibly in three to five year phases, so that we have a long-term simplex cooperation.